Nashville, went to overtime. We expect a big one here tonight with a lot of folks watching. Well, not only that, two big-time coaches, one of the best mid-major games, one of the best games, period. They're led by the senior, Ben Shepard. One of the best two-way players this side of the Mississippi. He gets out in the passing lanes, does an excellent job defensively, and he's terrific in transition. Also a high-level shooter, first-team Missouri Valley player coming into the season. Look out for him tonight. The Paladins, it's a fifth year Jalen Slauson. Paladin fans held their breath Monday night. He was a little banged up. He is full go tonight, and the Paladins are excited to watch him play. Well, he makes his biggest impact on the defensive end. The Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year last season led the conference in both blocks and steals, but what makes him most valuable is his passing ability in the half court. Furman had a blowout victory over North Greenville. Belmont, they're not going to be worried if they're in a close game. Monday night, boy, did it come down to the buzzer. And it came down to a freshman, Mr. Tyson from deep, an excellent draw up. Belmont coming in with some momentum, big time shot, just getting this college basketball season started. Both these teams are expected to not be in a position where they feel like they can win the game. It should be a good one here tonight. There you see Casey Alexander in his fourth season. A lot of success he's had up in Nashville. Ever since 2019, he has taken Belmont to the Brahmas land a few times. A, a guy that really coaches offense well. Coach Bob Ritchie getting going in his sixth season. They were oh so close a season ago, but it's more than just on the court. What he's done with facilities, what he's done with character development, He's all in for this Furman program. It's paid off. Well, if heartbreak was a word, it was last year, right? But he, he does all the things that you would want in a head coach at this level. He has promoted he has promoted the game at a high level. You see the crowd that's going to be behind us tonight. I mean, it's all around the excitement for Furman basketball. It's where it should be. Very close to a conference championship. This season might be that year. Great crowd on hand inside Timmons Arena. A, a home environment that the Paladins have over the last three or four years really, really excelled in one of the best stages in the Southern Conference and all of mid-majors. The new student section that kind of extends not only along the sideline, but the new rafters along the baseline kind of creates an L-shape for the students. It was packed out and it was loud on Monday night. It's a purple out here in Greenville. Jalen Slauson set the tap for the Paladins against Saban, and the Caps controlled by Belmont, and we're underway as you take a look at the starting five, first for the Bruins. Number two, Jacoby Gillespie with the basketball just passed it off. He was a big time football recruit. They got a steal with that young man, an excellent athlete who can distribute the basketball at a high level. Half court man to man for the Paladins. These two teams we mentioned met a year ago. It was an overtime win for Belmont in Nashville, one of the best games of the season. A nice drive take by Gillespie. And there you see his athleticism right from the beginning. Taking the ball to the basket, avoiding the defense, getting quick too. There's your starting five for the Paladins presented by Bon Secours. And they want J.P. Pagis, a player that's going to need to come on this year. Absolutely right. A good athlete, but Jalen Slauson, this is his team until somebody else says so. He's going to be that main option for this Paladin basketball team, somebody who can do it inside and out. Pass down low, looking for Shepard for a nice job. Forcing back outside the perimeter. Buckets on the opening possession for both these teams here in the early going. Shot clock now under 10. Double team come by Saban. Reverse layup off of Mark Heen with the rebound. Good defensive possession by Heen. Probably posting up a little bit too deep as you have a little bit of a careless turnover by Marcus Foster. But Garrett Heen is a guy that has struggled to put on a little bit of weight. But if you look at our keys to the game tonight, for Furman, you got to get out and run and transition. They are terrific when doing so. They have four different guys that can take off and initiate the break. And for Belmont, transition defense, kind of going along with the same thing. you got to get back in front. Sometimes Belmont likes to play with a lot of pace in the full court. You have to do it on the other end as well. Team the other night, 12 rebounds in that win over North Greenville. Three-pointer knocked down. Drew Freiberg, the graduate student out of State College, Pennsylvania for the Bruins. Well, the Princeton graduate transfer over to Belmont. He shot 39.7% from three last season, was second in the Ivy League in threes made. He's somebody you're going to have to keep an eye out for if you're firm. 11 points the other night. They saw it in the open. One point win for Belmont over Ohio. And Slauson's off the mark. Here comes the Bruins out running. Ball sent to the corner. Walker thought about a three. Furman, nice job getting back. And it's knocked down a bounds. They'll stay with Belmont. Communication's going to be at a premium. Both teams like to get up and down the basketball court and find early shots in the offense. 
really good communication by Furman. Shepard, top of the key. Nice job by Keen. That's going to be something watching how Furman kind of guards that ball screen up top there. Heen hedged out, forced it back the other way. Shot clock down to seven. Well, if there's a guy that could be considered a defensive stopper, it's going to be Marcus Foster, but he's going to have his hands full tonight. And this is when Furman can take off and get going. An excellent move by J.P. Pagese. A lot of contact there, Brian. I thought it could have been a foul call. Furman, a lot of options at point guard. J.P. Pagese getting the start. You also have Carter Witt who can come play. Uh, so a couple guards that Coach Ritchie said, hey, we're going to probably need two or three of them at any given time. He got the transfer from Wake Forest, another good option for the Paladins. So we'll see what can happen as that's an air ball out of bounds and then a saved up 10 on the shot clock, but grabbed by Marcus Foster and he throws it away. Joe Anderson, also the junior, saw good minutes the other night. That shot off the mark. Furman looking for their first lead. Up to Heen. He corrals it. A lot of contact, but lays it off the glass and in. Tell you what, nice job staying composed. Furman, first three buckets in the paint. How about the fact that Garrett Heen was able to corral that basketball with one hand and still able to finish it, standing at about 6'10". Big time play by number 13. Furman with the 6'5 advantage, the first lead of the night here in the early going for Furman. Active Furman defense. Defense run by associate head coach Jeremy Grove. That shot's off the mark. Furman looking for a controlled break. He's thought about the three. Over to Slauson. Nice pump fake, drives the baseline. Oh. Nice pass to Heen with a two-handed jam. Unselfish basketball. That's a big time play. That's why Jalen Slauson's so good. He can put it on the deck, out on the perimeter, and when he gets there, he sees the defense so well. Big time pass and finish. Furman a 6-0 run over the last minute 20. 5-4 deficit to an 8-5 lead. Here's Bothwell all alone, and he lays it over the top of the rim with two hands, and the Paladins up 10-5. Defensively, Furman has come ready to play. Belmont's going to try to change sides of the floor offensively. They are doing a nice job limiting their actions in the half court so far. Furman scored 91 points in their win over North Greenville on Monday night. Cruised to a 91-55 win. Belmont in need of a bucket. Shot clock down to 13. Shepard thought about a three. One thing you'll notice about Furman's defense, they are forcing the catches to get out really far and having active hands on the defensive end. And there it is, another turnover. And Furman is off to the races, defensively bringing the intensity, Bryant. 8-0 Furman run over the last two minutes. And Timmons Arena likes what they're seeing early. Paladins up five in Greenville. was a night at the Home Depot at every location. A night when our stores see a grand transformation. We bring out the tools you really do need, like snowmen and string lights and plenty of trees. We work through the night preparing our splendor for Black Friday savings all through November. And what you do next is always fantastic because we have the tools to make your holiday magic. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. I'm Cindy. Welcome to my dorm room. This is my walk-in closet slash vanity. This is where I nap a lot. Every dorm needs a cotton candy maker. is hockey. This broadcast of NCAA college basketball is brought to you by BMW, sheer driving pleasure, by Bon Secours, helpware for the universe of you, and by 
Ingles. Low prices, love the savings. And Pepsi, that's what I like. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Ogles be with you. Firming up 10 to five in the midst of an 8-0 run, starting on the defensive side of the end. And that's absolutely what it is. Not only are they getting out and playing good defense and getting in the passing lanes, but Furman is just getting out and initiating the break through their defense, like you say, pushing the, pushing Beaumont's offense out away from the basket where they're most uncomfortable. Fourth meeting all time. We talked about that meeting a year ago. Tell you what, not just one of the best mid-major games we saw a year, it was the best one of the best basketball games. We saw your great environment up in Nashville. Furman trying to get the better of the Bruins here tonight. Bothwell trying to drive down the left side. He's swatted. He'll be on the baseline. He'll stay with the Paladins. In for the first time tonight for Furman. Vin Vanderwall, the 6'7", 210-pound freshman out of Elmhurst, Illinois. Tell you what, the coaching staff raved about him in the offseason. Now we know why. A couple other subs, Joe Anderson and Carter Witt. Carter Witt and Joe Anderson coming in at the same time. That gives you two primary ball handlers on the floor, both natural point guards. Carter Witt, a transfer from Wake Forest, is terrific in transition. Sees the floor really well, handles the ball extraordinarily well. Struggled with a little bit of confidence coming back from playing with Wake Forest. Bob Ritchie is really high on the young man. We'll see how it proceeds after a nice performance in their first game. First bucket of Vanderwall's career was an alley-oop that he took away from Jalen Slauson that brought the crowd to its feet Monday night. Here's Slauson in the corner, thought about a three, two to shoot, turnaround, fade away, tough jumper off the front of the rim. Bothwell with an offensive rebound, then taken away. Nice job by Tyson. Tyson looking to go coast to coast. He's going to be fouled. It looks like they're going to get Joe Anderson for his first personal and the team's first. K. Tyson going to shoot some free throws, getting out in transition, a little too handsy, got the wrist on the way up. Kate Tyson's an interesting player. Somebody who didn't get all the offers that he probably deserves, has good size, the younger brother of Hunter Tyson that plays at Clemson. He has nice skill, and he had the big game winner in their first matchup against Ohio. This guy has a bright future in the Missouri Valley. Michael Shanks, 6'6", six, six junior in for the Bruins. Vanderwall talked about the other night for the Pound. has 11 points in his collegiate debut. Carter Witt, 10 points as well. That, that shows all the guards that Coach Ritchie has, and not only Papa, what you know about, but Joe Anderson, Carter Witt, J.P. Pagis, who got the start. I mean, you got to figure out the rotation. It's a good problem to have with that sort of depth for the guard position. Well, and, and the guys fit each other really well. Joe Anderson, he's dribbling the air out of the ball right now, but for the most part, he's somebody who's going to give it up and then play off the catch. That is a big-time pass and finish by Jalen Slauson. Passing to Mike Bothwell. Bothwell, good cut. They're going to overplay him a little bit. Furman's returning leading scorer from last season. He can really fill it up, so he has to take what the defense gives him. Nice cut, nice pass, nice finish. Belmont had, had a field goal in four minutes. Those two free throws. The only point. Nice defense down low. Tough fadeaway jumper. Nice move. There you talked about Tyson. Super smooth by the freshman. You see Furman quickly wants to get the ball out of the bucket. Get back down to the offensive end. Slauson down low. A lot of patience. Double team comes. Ball stripped away and taken away. Furman turns it over for the fourth time here in the first six and a half minutes. Team's trade turnovers. That's going to be a foul in the backcourt going against Shepard. A little too aggressive. A case maybe going too fast there for Belmont? A, a little bit. And then on the other end, Furman, when Jalen Slauson uses that little Charles Barkley move, that's a transition foul. If you're Ben Shepard, you need to let that one go. You're the most important player for your team. Get back in defense. Give yourself a chance to get a stop. Don't foul in the full court. On the other hand, Jalen Slauson uses this little Charles Barkley move where he likes to spin and post his guy up and then move in. Furman has gotten a little stagnant when they get in that position. Furman needs to continue to move off the ball. Bothwell has it knocked out of bounds and stay with the pallet. It's 19 on the shot clock. There you see Chad Warner hop off the bench. New on the staff this year. He's running kind of the offensive coordinator, so to speak, for the Paladins. And tell you what, has a lot of the same philosophies that Coach Ritchie has. A nice new addition to the staff. Three from the quarter on the way. Anderson a bit too strong. Rebound taken down by the Bruins.
positionally, Furman has been outstanding to start this game. Everybody on the weak side getting out and hedging these ball screens. That's not an easy task when Ben Shepard has the basketball. Shanks along the baseline, hesitates, has an open look, in and out, loose ball, Bothwell with the rebound. And this Rebounds 8-2 in favor of the Paladins. Hello, Vanderwall catches it, corrals it, lays it in. And that's when, that's when Furman's most dangerous. You get a guy, as soon as they catch the ball or get a turnover, they can take off and initiate the break. That time it was Mike Bothwell. Last time it was Jalen Slauson. So many different guys. They give you that lineup versatility and transition. Paladins by six, and it's going to be a foul. Near the top of the key going against the Paladins. Team second. Tyrese Huey with his first personal. Bothwell out. As Slauson checks back in, as well as Marcus Foster, the 6'4 redshirt junior. Herman blistering the net, 64% here in the early going. That's the six point advantage. Gillespie. One on one against Anderson. Nice defense by the Paladins. And now a turnover. Dribble off the foot. Slauson sends it up to Wood. Knocked out of bounds. We'll stay firm in basketball. And that's just another example of defense into offense. They're not able to convert that possession, but Furman really on top of the basketball and getting out. That's one that Carter Witt needs to catch and finish. He he has times, Bryant, where he can get a little bit lazy. He needs to be locked in all the time. The talent's there. The mentality so far. You have to take every possession seriously. Here's Witt in the lane, out to Anderson, quick fire three on the way, yes. And that's what you get right there. Carter Witt getting in the paint, drawing the defense, and then Joe Anderson stepping outside, shot over 45% from three last season, looking to carry that momentum this year. Nine point Furman lead, the largest here in the first half. Next whistle, be an under 12 timeout. Belmont looking to respond off the mark. Flying in his market, Foster Terrence. Look how quick Furman wants to get into the front court. Leaves it off, left the glass and in. Timeout, Belmont, and the lead's double digits. And that's Carter Witt at his finest, getting it out on the wing and sprinting in transition. Excellent pass, big time finish. Furman coming out ready to play in a high level competition. Here comes Carter Witt, excellent feed, and Tyrese Huey with the easy work. Furman up 11 as we go to break. is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. We don't really want war. All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. Fate only binds you if you let it. We will make our own destiny. Front yards have long reigned as the showpiece of the house, but just like a good mullet, we all know the party's in the back. Barbecue Guys is committed to helping create amazing backyard experiences with the best grills in the game, outdoor essentials, and free design services for building your ultimate backyard. It's time to bring the front yard's reign to an end. All right, boys, let's see. Stop on by barbecueguys.com. You're tough. Rugged. And your truck is... Worth a lot of money in today's market. Who are you? I'm from Edmonds. People come to us first to buy and sell their cars. This truck is in high demand, and if you want to see its resale value, you can check out our free appraisal tool. Super useful for actual truck owners, not just car commercial actors. Oh, I also do theater. Oh, nice. Car shoppers go to Edmonds first. We drive it like it is. Oh, your lumber's hollow. Firming up nine, or making 11 here in the early going. Belmont, couple from outside, and tell you what, they do not lose a lot. Take a look at that, 19 plus wins the last 17 seasons. Short list of who's done that, those two at the top are national brands. Oh, you're absolutely right. Belmont has been doing it for a long time. As you say, 17 years. Ricky Bird starts it out, and now Casey Alexander. Casey actually recruited me out of high school. I'm from Tennessee originally, so Belmont's certainly a brand. But how about Furman going a little 1-3-1 one -one pressure coming out of the timeout to vary up their look to Belmont. 
and you have length with Tyrese Huey. He's not the tallest guy, but Bob Ritchie looking to mix up their defenses to throw Belmont and keep them off their rhythm. They've had success early. Now they're looking to continue that. I talked to the staff before Monday night. I said, hey, we haven't practiced it a lot, but we need to mix it in. It's good for a couple turns. Really might have won the game for the Paladins against the Louisville Cardinals a season ago. Is that three-pointers on the way inside out? And the rebound taken down by Furman. Slawson, transition three on the way. That's a bit too strong. Rebound taken down by the Bruins. I'll tell you what, that's the shot Bob Ritchie doesn't mind. It's in the flow. Slawson can make those from downtown. Well, he's improved over the summer. He put a lot of work into it, but that's kind of the one thing that's holding him back for the next level. He's an excellent defender. He's got that type of body size. Can he shoot it from deep is the biggest question for Jalen Slawson. Yeah, and you see a lot of mock NBA drafts that has Slawson being drafted with a lot of potential. Nice take down the right side of the lane and off the glass. How about Ben Shepard? You want to talk about the next level. He has that capability, too. We got two on the floor today that have next level potential. Ben Shepard, big time move using his 6'6 six, 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 six frame to get up over the top. Nice finish off the glass. Belmont kind of trying to regain a little bit of rhythm. That stopped a 7-0 firm and run and Palin has turned it over easily into the hands of Gillespie. Palin has turned it over now for the fifth time. Shepard thought about a three and now top of the key Freiburg. Look how quick that ball moves for the Bruins offense. There will be a three-pointer on the way. Shepard off the mark. Bruins now just one of six from long range. Lawson looks to wave everybody off. He's trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Walker. But look how stagnant the rest of the offense is. He's going to have to score those, but the, the rest of his teammates, we got to have some kind of backdoor cut, somebody moving over to at least keep the defense occupied. Forget Three about it. on the way. Shepard Forget knocks it, it down. It. Open shot and a timeout taken by Coach Bob Ritchie. And Ben Shepard can really shoot the basketball. If you're not going to make shots, you better get back in transition and match up because Belmont can fill it up. Ben Shepard. First team all Missouri Valley player coming in at the in the preseason. He's certainly a big time scorer. Shepard 18 points in that one point win over Ohio to open the season for the Bruins. Talk about that last possession, Slauson 101. He said, hey, Furman's offense is known to move without the basketball. There you kind of saw everybody standing outside the perimeter. Get some backdoor cuts. Maybe he, look, that's exactly what Coach Ritchie's telling his team in the huddle right now. You got to move without the ball. Well, that was their strength last season as they made their run all the way to the conference championship game. They had in constant, they were in constant movement, Bryant, off the basketball. Whenever Slauson, he commands a lot of attention. That gives you opportunities because he's such a good passer to move away from the ball and then find ways to score. Six-point Furman advantage. Largest pal in the lead has been 11. Heavy man-to-man -man pressure by the Bruins. Furman's still shooting Terrence, 60% from the floor. Foster bumped, no call. Picks it up his dribble, finds Heen. Heen's bumped, and there's the whistle. Just the second personal for the Bruins. And Belmont's going to play a physical brand of basketball on the defensive end. Little handoff, a little too physical by Kate Tyson. He'll learn how to play that as his career goes on. But a couple of small things you see with Furman, and Coach Bob Ritchie, he's probably going to address this at the next break, but you pass that ball, you need to sprint to screen. A little bit lackadaisical when they're trying to move the ball. Big time cut by Bothwell. Talk about moving without the ball, and a nice job. Hesitation gets the defender in the air, lays it in. Well, that's what you get when you're a senior in college. You figure out how to play with pace, how to keep the defense off balance. Bothwell has made a living in college getting guys out of the air and finishing. Furman held North Greenville 34% shooting from the field, holding Belmont right now 36% from the floor. Shanks looks to try baseline, runs into Slauson, offensive foul. How about the awareness from Jalen Slauson? He's guarding the guy who passes it, sees that there's so much momentum heading towards the baseline, beats him to the spot, and the charge is taken. Nice play by the senior. Mitchin beating the offensive player to the spot, clearly set, not afraid to take contact. Jalen Slauson, Palin has chance to push the lead back to double digits here, 840 to go in the half. And Pagese has it poked away from behind this active Belmont defense, and both teams want to go quick. Shanks to the corner, Tyson, three-pointer on the way, yes. And the freshman can shoot at 18 in the opener against Ohio, plus the game winner, as we mentioned. He's somebody that can get hot in a hurry. He plays with a lot of confidence and a lot of bravado. Bel Furman's guards need to do a better job taking care of the basketball, whether it's Carter Witt or J.P. Pagese. You can't turn it over. 
Oppo, good look from the corner, couldn't knock it down. You hear the Furman bench yelling, get back, three-pointer on the way. Shepard, back-to-back three-pointers, and just like that, a two-point game. And that's what they can do. Kay Tyson, he has a little bit of that same thing that Jalen Slauson has in that he can get a rebound and go. Furman's offense not playing with a whole lot of pace. They're going to have to change that. 6-0 run for the Bruins, those last two three-pointers. And look how stagnant they get. That ball gets in the paint. Furman gets stagnant. But Bothwell just has found ways to get to the rim. He's the only guy moving without the basketball. They have to do that as a cohesive unit. And then they have to get in front of shooters. Ben Shepard and Kate Tyson have started to find their rhythm in the half court. Yeah, Belmont now 4 of 9 from long range. A whistle off the ball. And it'll be Belmont basketball when we come back. We expected a good one. We have a good one. 7.32 to go here in this first half. Pallet is holding a four-point lead in Greenville. sales event on now through november 30th your purchase of a new bmw will help provide 200 meals for local families in need it's bow time this is larry and this is the big bold hand breaded bows chicken sandwich larry knew he couldn't he shouldn't i mean he is a chicken after all but larry craved this flavor packed hunk of sandwich and before he knew it his little chicken heart belonged to bojangles forever thanks to a sandwich so juicy so tender even a chicken wants to eat it. Why are people not trying to eat? Mountain Dew. A rush of crisp and refreshing flavor. Delivering a bold citrus kick. Do the do. Nachos. Better with Pepsi. Paladins up four. Belmont, though, knocking it down from long range. They're four of nine. Tell you what, on the season, the last couple years, Belmont reigning from long distance. Well, it's it's almost like it's flipped the script a little bit over the first two media timeouts. Belmont initially turning the ball over and Furman getting out in transition and finding opportunities. Now it's been Belmont finding things in the semi-break, whether it's Ben Shepard or Kay Tyson. You have to take care of the basketball. Both teams struggling it with varied points of the game. Whenever they do, you can't let teams that shoot the ball well and have experience get extra opportunities. Belmont raining it from long range. They've hit their last four from the field. Now five of ten from long range, and it's a one-point game. And Freeberg is such a tough matchup for opposing fives. He's big and strong enough and able to guard some bigger fives that he's going to play against, but he can step out and shoot it. That's a big-time shot. Furman's largest lead was 11. Should take another look. That little step back jumper, tough to guard. Freeberg, tell you what, he's not just playing on the perimeter. Comes in at 6'7, one of those players that can go inside or out. Last lead was 5 to 4 for Belmont. A stop and a bucket. They can find themselves back in front. Shot clock down to 7, kick to the corner. Vanderwall thought about a three, hesitated. Now Bothwell, three to shoot. Wild shot attempt. Heen has it. One up, but they're going to say shot clock violation. He didn't get it off, and the ball over to the Bruins. And that's just a freshman mistake by Vanderwall. If you're going to get that ball in the corner, don't bring it right to where the guy was coming from. you got to find a different way to penetrate and try to make things happen. That's a freshman getting happy feet and trying to get it back to his senior. Pretty 
Dorsey switch from Vanderwall. Bothwell a little late getting over. Hesitation shot up. Halfway down, pops out. Vanderwall with the rebound. Paladin's looking to go quick. Had he now Joe Anderson wide open for three and a little bit off the mark. Tipped around up top. Here's Bothwell into the lane. The floater, but an offensive foul. Wave it off. Michael Joe Anderson's Shanks not going to get an open look more than that. Yeah, Michael Shanks getting out in front of the play. A little bit of a broken situation. Gets in front, takes it directly to the chest. And that's tough. So Toughness Bothwell point. kind of avoid the contact. Couldn't get up, and now Slauson will check back in as Bothwell takes a seat. It'll be two fouls on Mike Bothwell. That's a big loss here in the early going. He's been that guy that's been able to put pressure on the rim with consistency so far this game, Brian. Belmont just moves that ball so well from side to side. That's one of the things about their offense that makes them so difficult to guard, Brian. It, it's, it's second and third side offense that's so difficult to guard. Too much hands by the young fella, J.P. Pegues. But Ben Shepard, you, you get him even in a semi-closeout, and he's athletic enough and big enough at 6'6 to get past that initial line of defense. Foster back in for the Paladins as well as Carter Witt. Bruins looking to get their first lead for 5 4. Should be an offensive foul, and it is. That's the freshman Vanderwall. And I actually thought that would have been in the second offensive foul of that possession. Kate Tyson, as he was going behind the back, smacked him in the face. But how about Ben Vanderwall moving his feet, getting good position in front? And you can be moving, Brian. You don't have to. Be that's the misconception still. people say. Yeah, exactly right. And that's an emphasis coming into this year. You get in front, you don't necessarily have to be standing still as long as you have correct guarding position. Ben Vanderwall doing a nice job getting out in front. Seeing some emotion from the freshman. Nice fake baseline, all blocked off the backboard. Help side defense coming over. But at the same time, you don't get a bucket, but that's the first time that Furman's offense has moved with pace in the half court. You got to get out on him. Step back three, knocked down by Shepard. Shepard now 11 points and the Bruins up to it. A 6-0 Belmont run, a 12-2 run over the last three minutes. Freiburg, quick trigger three on the way. That one's too strong. Now you have to go. This is when you've had chances in the half or in the full court for Furman offensively. Got to figure out that time to attack. And Garrett Heen has to be tougher. He has to be tougher. That's not your move right there. You have a nice penetrating pass by Jalen Sloss. You have to find a way to either quick finish or draw some contact for the foul. We highlighted Shepard in the open. The Senior now with 11 points, four or five from the field, three of four from long range. He's a bad boy. And they're looking to find some rhythm back offensively. Nice pass down low to Heen, lays it off the glass. He wanted Heen to be a little stronger, and here he shows it. Yeah, that's a nice pass. Carter Witt navigating the pick and roll. Heen getting it, shielding the, the ball away from the defense and finishing with the left hand. He needs to be a factor for them. Tied at 25. Shepard again. Furman has to go over those screens, kicks it to the corner. Belmont now 45% on the night. Shepard drives baseline, kicks it up, open, three-pointer on the way, and no. Hesitation and now knocked it down. That's the last guy you can leave open. The grad transfer from Princeton. Coach Richie telling his team cannot lose the shooters. Now six of twelve from Long Ranch. Furman looking to answer. Knocked down by Marcus Foster. Both teams now trading blows. He's your potential breakout player for this Furman team. A good defensive player, ultra switchable because of his strength and size. He's able to knock down shots. It only helps Furman. Bob Richie is animated. That's going to be the six-team foul. Furman. Listen, Coach Richie not in agree with the call. We'll see if we can't get another look. Action from the top of the key. Coach Richie saying, hey, that wasn't a push. Should have been a flop warning. You can feel the intensity, Terrence, between these two power mid-majors. Oh, 
Down low to Bronze, layup rattles around the rim and in. Witt couldn't quite get over to help. Uh, that, that's Carter Witt from the jump. He needs to be in position before that ball ever has the chance to get there, especially with Garrett Heen hedging so far out. Witt looking to go one-on-one, -on -one, sends it out. Heen thought about a three. Now Witt is open in front of the students' long range. Yes. The Paladins now have hit a couple from long range the last three possessions. And Furman back up one. Back and forth. Terrence, we go late first half. This game's going to be one on the defensive end. Obviously, you want to hit some shots in the half court, but Furman has to do a better job of getting out and contesting shots. Shepard, a little bit of a heat check off the mark. Rebound taken by Slauson. Rebounds heavily in favor of the Paladins at 17-7, and now you're going to have an over and back call as Whit didn't establish possession. It'll be Belmont basketball when we come back. 3.14 to go here in the opening half. It's a one-point game. Carter Witt, not known as a shooter per se, but he can knock him down when he has that much time. Furman Belmont, we have a battle here at the Timmons. You're tough, rugged, and your truck is... Worth a lot of money in today's market. Who are you? I'm from Edmonds. People come to us first to buy and sell their cars. This truck is in high demand, and if you want to see its resale value, you can check out our free appraisal tool. Super useful for actual truck owners, not just car commercial actors. Oh, I also do theater. Oh, nice. Car shoppers go to Edmonds first. We drive it like it is. Oh, your lumber's hollow. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart-pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here. The game has never been better. That is hockey. Celtics Hawks and Warriors Suns Wednesday. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Ogles will be back here inside Timmins Arena. One point game, Furman leading at 31-30. They will take us a little bit of the coach Bob Ritchie's huddle animated with his team. Focus and got to stay down defensively. Can't leave the open shooter. Well, focus defensively in that you have to know who you're guarding. KYP, know your personnel. If Freeburg gets the ball, he's trying to ball fake and sidestep into a three. If Ben, if. Excuse me, if Ben Shepard has the ball, he's looking to score on every possession. You have to watch out for him. He's so versatile in where he can score. Shot clock down to seven. Shepard with the basketball. There you see Heen on the hedge. Tried to pass it down low. Found the cutter. Turnover. Bothwell into the front court. Beats everyone down to lay it off the glass and in. And tell you what, there's the hedge. And you had to be ready for the help side. Well, Garrett Heen has been extremely active on ball screens. Belmont's not going to do a ton of posting up. So Heen's defensive importance is huge at that five spot. Can't let him get split as Gillespie is able to get the reverse layup. He's a big time athlete, Brian. He's a football recruit out of high school. They stole one, played with B. Mays Elite during the summers just to kind of stay in shape for football. Turns out he's a pretty good basketball player as well. Had some power five offers for football. At the same time, Casey Alexander likes what they have in the freshman. Gillespie now with four. Furman shot clock down to eight. Hesitation three on the way, a bit too strong. Long rebound taken down by Shepard. Foster hesitated a bit there, had to put it up. Shot clock was down. Shepard probably leading the shoulder. Offensive rebound, back up, blocked by Foster. Rebound taken down by Whip. Marcus Foster is accepting the challenge defensively, and this is when Furman can take off. Look at the pace, though. A lot of jogging, a lot of standing still, but look at this. Hello! Oh, forget about it, Brian Lambert. Da da da, da da da. Sports Center top 10, reverse alley oop. That gets the students on their feet. We'll see if the Paladins can't carry this moment. Hey, we talked about Furman's off ball movement. That's a big time finish and cut. Pass 
and finished by Jalen Slauson. Walker looking to quiet the crowd, and he does. Isaiah Walker with his first bucket. Tell you what, these teams just trading blows back and forth as Witt turns it over. And that's going back to what we talked about. Carter Witt can kind of be loose with the basketball at times. You've got to take care of that thing. Heiberg trying to back down the defender all the way off the glass and in. Tell you what, he's saying I can do more than just lay it off the, or hit the three, I can lay it off the glass. Belmont back up two. Well, when you're switching one through four like Furman is, sometimes you're going to get into some of those situations where you have a Carter Witt on a Freeburg or you have a J.P. Pegues who's not in the game right now on a Freeburg. He's going to have to take advantage of those matchups this game for Belmont to have success. Bothwell spun in the lane, little floater around the rim and in. Mike Bothwell now with 12. How about that? The spin move and finish over the top with the offhand. Bothwell coming ready to play today. All of his points inside the three-point line. Freeberg sends it over to Gillespie. Three on the way. That one's off the mark. Furman can hold for one shot. Shot clock turned off. Furman at 57% from the field. Belmont now at 48%. This has been a high-level game. Look for a little ball screen action. Give the ball to Jalen Slauson on a roll situation and find out what your team can play. Five to shoot. Witt. Belmont looks like they've switched to a 2-3 zone. Ball sent to the corner. Bothwell contested three on the way. Doesn't fall. And we go into the half tied at 37 apiece. Nice move there by Belmont. Switch up defenses. Uh, just to kind of throw the team off at the last minute. Gets you out of what you want to do with the ball screen situation. But Jalen Slauson has been really, really good. And man, what a dunk he had earlier this half. Nice move. Bothwell getting in the lane up top backwards. He could do that too. Jalen Slauson's a bad man. And he looks to try to get this 37 tie Furman's way. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. We don't really want war. All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. Fate only binds you if you let it. We will make our own destiny. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Hurry in to get our best deals of the season. Get in and get away. Get 0% APR financing plus zero payments for 90 days on select vehicles. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. I save my shrimp tails and jars under my bed. You don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It just helps you create an affordable price. Oh. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Did you think you could relax? That you'd seen everything there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. We're tied at the half. Ryan Lambert, Terrence Ogles will be with you. 37 apiece here on Frank Selby night here. 
one of the players to score 100 points. Here he is being honored. A lot of family, a lot of friends in here. He's going to be honored as an inductee into the National College Basketball Hall of Fame. And tell you what, really cool to have someone like that back in the building. A uh, consensus All-America, uh, All-American during his time playing for Furman. And then goes on to the NBA. He's drafted place nine years in the NBA, Bryant. Selected to an All-Star game twice. But here's the kicker. His career was broken up in the middle by three years serving in the military. Big time recognition for Frank Selvey. Happy for him. He is well deserving. He's a legend. deserving and a legend here in this building. Led Division One scoring both as a junior with almost 30 points a game. A senior, Terrence, 41.7 points a game as a as a senior. I'll tell you what, you like to put the ball through the hoop. He, he would make you look like you weren't a scorer. I mean, 100 hey, points a game. That's not a jab at you, Parker. Yeah, well, hey, I, I could score it, but not at that level. Let's put it this way, 100 points in a game against Newberry, and I realize it's Newberry, and Newberry's currently Division II, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about Frank Selvey. 100 points a game against anybody is really good. Uh, living legend, happy that he's getting the recognition that he deserves. His jersey is in the rafters here in this building, and uh, I always find it fascinating, Bryant, whenever we talk about some of these guys that played during that time period that had their careers broken up and they had to serve our country yeah. during a time of need. I, I just think that's really, really cool. And Frank Selvey, uh, I'm happy that he gets that type of recognition. Especially around Veterans Day. This time on of Veterans year, Day. I tell you what, and look, we still could play a game of horse and I would put my money on him against most of the people that are not in a jersey in this building. Now, Frank Selvey and I had a, a big welcome to the Selvey family, both in person and watching. Uh, a, a big honor there. You see Furman Athletic Director Jason Donnelly there presenting him the game ball. And tell you what, he probably likes what he's seen. High-level basketball tied at 37. But both teams playing extremely well. Frank Selvey has to be pleased with what else going on, but happy that he is being recognized here in front of a very good crowd today. First half stats and highlights on the other side here at we're at the half in Greenville. It's Belmont and Furman tied at 37 apiece. There's never been a better time to get away with a great deal on the Hyundai you've always wanted. With America's best warranty and up to three years complimentary maintenance. It's your journey. Own every mile at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Hurry in to get our best deals of the season. Get in and get away. Get 0% APR financing plus zero payments for 90 days on select vehicles. Now, during the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. At Charmin, we're all about the science of softness. So, we doubly tested our Charmin Ultra Soft to prove its value really stacks up. First up, the cushy soft test. Wow, softer than ever. Next, the absorbency test. See, it's two times more absorbent, so you can use less. So, Charmin Ultra Soft is always worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have one more test to conduct. We all go, why not enjoy the go with Charmin? When you buy 10 tickets on Vivid Seats, you get the 11th ticket free. I wonder what my 11th will be. Hey! you trash! Living rent free in a hockey player's head? <laughs> or maybe just make some noise! What's your 11th? Let your heart be light. From now on, our trouble will be out of sight. Unlike the other guys, T-Mobile has price lock. Switch now and we won't raise the price of your talk, text, and data. I like to smell my beard after a really good meal. Dude, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It just helps you create an affordable price. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Call or click to get a quote today. Get Black Friday deals now at Target. Save on the hottest gifts to get ahead this holiday. Plus, score more Black Friday deals all month long. Get low prices and great deals so you can holiday your way. Only at Target. This broadcast is brought to you in part by BMW. Sheer driving pleasure. By Bon Secours. Health care for the universe of you. Ingles. Low price, love the savings, and buy Pepsi. That's what I like. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Ogles be with you as we take a look at these first half highlights. Terrence Furman jumped out, had an 11-point lead about midway through that first half. Things were clicking. Oh, and then Belmont got it going by on the arc. Well, there was a tale of two portions of the half, rather. Furman at the beginning getting out, getting some steals, and getting out in transition and finishing. And then Belmont kind of found their rhythm shooting it from distance, but Guys need to move better off the ball. Mike Bothwell has been good at that. He's pr pretty much the only one attacking the rim at a high level, but when Furman gets running and Carter Witt can operate in that capacity, they are very good. Here you see Bothwell laying it off the glass. Furman started getting the offensive rhythm back there late stage of first half. He called for Heen to be a little bit stronger. There he went up, was able to finish, and then the long ball started going for Furman a little bit late, not able to tie it up. Well, not only Carter Witt, but Bothwell with the pass, and how about Jalen Slauson with the finish? That's got to be the dunk of the year later. so far. Uh, Jalen Slauson doing a lot of different things to help out this squad, but offensively, whenever they're able to turn defense into offense, that's when Furman's been good. Taking a look at these first half stats, Belmont shot 48%. They really heated up that last eight minutes. Furman 55% for the field. Rebounds, they went staggeringly in favor of the Paladins there. Turnovers, though, both teams plaguing them a bit. Well, I think the biggest difference is the assist. Belmont is having to create some things on their own, you know, whether it be ball fakes into sidestep threes. Their shot difficulty is much higher than what Furman's has been. But Furman's got to take care of the basketball, as does Belmont. 17 combined turnovers. It's been a little bit sloppy. You see some of these early season things occurring for both teams. Whoever is more solid and more disciplined in the second half is going to come away with a win. We'll take another break. Be back for second half action here from Timmins Arena. We knew it was going to be a good one. It's delivering halfway through. Furman tied at 37 with Belmont. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. We don't really want war. All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. Fate only binds you if you let it. We will make our own destiny. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. And Doug. It's nice to unwind after a long week of telling people how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Shoot. Woo! I'm on fire tonight. You're a natural. We're not counting that. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Hey, have you heard? Ethiopian jazz. It blends beats from like three or four genres. But does it shred like this? Well, while you're all rocking, I'm laughing. Comedians are the best thing that happened to podcasts. In my opinion, house is number one. Banger after banger after banger. Pero have you heard this? Big dollar got the answers if you need some. Yo, blood ain't my blood if you don't breathe nothing. As a basketball player, I've, I've always been an underdog. You gotta have the same commitment on both sides. And you know, I've earned the respect as an artist, but I feel like I gotta constantly prove something. Once I get in the studio, I'm not going in there as like a basketball player rapping. I'm going in there as dang dollar. 
It's a beautiful time for basketball. A night of dynamic duos. And championship contenders. Celtics, Hawks, and Warriors, Suns. Wednesday on ESPN. Getting ready for the start of second half action here in Greenville. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Oglesby with you. Tell you what, you start talking about who performed well in that first half. Interesting leading scores for the Paladins. No surprise, Mike Bothwell, but tell you what, Shepard, long range. It's not just four for eight. He started four for five in the Freiburg. I mean, Freiburg, he was, he was letting it fly and knocking them down. Well, uh, that's where Belmont got back into it was when Freiburg and Shepard started knocking down shots from the perimeter. Most of it came on semi-break situations where Furman was struggling to communicate a little bit, but Mike Bothwell, has been pretty good in the first half or so far tonight rather like cutting off the basketball getting some easier looks sometimes Furman has gotten stagnant at points during this game but whenever they're cutting off the basketball they're still able to find good shots and Bothwell has been the recipient of some of these passes whether it be back door or passing it to Jalen Slauson on that monster flush in the first half you look down the scoring column Bothwell with 12. After that, nobody with more than Garrett Heen with six for the Paladins. as they see some of the new I don't know if dancers. There's more, if there's more moves up in the stands tonight or on the floor, they I'm would. not quite sure. There's a lot of moves going on at Burma. <laughs> on the other side of the scoring column, as I try to keep it on the hardwood here, uh, Freebird with 11, Shepard with 11. After that, you talked about the freshman Tyson. He knocked down a couple from long range. Who for Furman do you want stepping up here in the second half to help the scoring with all the Bob? Well, it, it's a by committee situation for Furman, but some of these guys that have played well, Marcus Foster has played well defensively. Can he knock down a couple more shots? That's going to be important. JP Pegues has been looked at as kind of this next guy that can push the pace, knock down shots, create some things off the bounce. Are we going to be able to see some of that here in the second half? But Carter Witt is a point of emphasis for me. Why? Three assists, two turnovers. Some of those turnovers have led directly to wide open threes on the other end. If Furman's tighter with the basketball, they should win this basketball game. But that goes for both teams, really. Talked about a little bit of this new setup. Students, obviously, where they've been along the sideline with the baseline. Great student turnout. Over 350 students on Monday night. Got a similar crowd here tonight. A really good crowd all around. Non-conference, big-time matchup. Furman fans showing up, showing out in this kind of revamped Timmons Arena on that side of the students. On the other side, you have the Wicked Reed, kind of what they call the, the brew hospitality area that's raised up over. You can see the court. It's Coach Richie giving some final halftime instructions to your team. Take us into the locker room. What do you think the key message was for Coach Richie at the half? And then consequently on the other side for the Bruins and head coach Casey Alexander. Well, if you're firm and you're trying to get some of these defensive possessions and get out and run because you have so many different guys that can initiate the break, that's when they've gotten their easiest look so far. And if you're Belmont, every possession has to be good in the half court. You can't turn the basketball over because whenever they're able to hang it on and that ball swings from side to side, they're finding good shots for their big time shooters in Ben Shepard and Mr. Freebird. It will be Furman basketball in this purple out, wearing the purple unis at home to start this second half. Same starting five. Little we'll bit of matchup zone. A yep. little bit of matchup zone by Belmont to start out the second half, just to kind of change the pace, if you will. Furman, whenever they're able to move the basketball and they start moving well without the ball, they're really good. Casey Alexander just trying to mix up the pressure a little bit. Bothwell sends it to Foster in the corner. Thought about the three. Nice spin move. Contact. No whistle. Loose ball. It's going to be kept. No out of bounds. Last touch by the pallet as Foster could corral it. Little mix up to start out the second half. Good move. Saban maintaining his verticality. Good defensive possession. Belmont basketball. Berman led by as many as 11. That was a 19 to 8. Largest lead for Belmont was three. That was a 28-25 late in the half, an early whistle here going against the Paladins. And that's Marcus Foster coming over on the help side. When that skip pass occurs, he's got to sprint out and maintain correct position. Just got his feet tangled up a little bit, put himself in a bad spot. Kate Tyson able to take advantage. The first foul on Marcus Foster, first for the Paladins here. Early second half. You know what, Parker, we talked about probably a lot of natural attention on this game, both well-known mid-major brands, top 15 in the mid-major poll. You know what, you've seen both teams at times 
uh, really excel offensively, but you talked about maybe the defensive side of the ball being the more important one, and why is that as these teams both we know have prolific offenses? Well, both function best when they operate with speed. I think that's the big thing, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse sometimes when I say that, because whenever Furman gets going, they're pushing, the ball's changing sizes of the floor, they're moving with pace. Same goes for Belmont. Just skilled offensively, and that ball moves so fast. Down low, late whistle, and that's going to be another foul on Marcus Foster, and two at the line for the Bruins. And he needs to go and put his chest on the defense and not leave his feet. That's Freebird being an older player and just using basic fundamentals. Ball fake, got Foster off his balance, and that's a foul. Freebird to shoot two, the State College, Pennsylvania native. First one rattles in and out. That's the he doesn't third miss free throw of the night for Belmont. How about this? Furman's yet to go to the line. It's been a physical basketball game, and the refs are letting them play. Credit to them. The true Freebird played well so far. He looks like he will dominate the YMCA. Tell you what, crowd goes wild. That's Free Bojangles. Missed two free throws in the second half, and they took care of that early. Freebird 0 of 2 from the line. Pegues sends it to Foster. Thought about a three. Back out to Pegues. See Furman trying to move that basketball. The offensive side as Belmont's back into the half court man to man. Bothwell working against Shepard. Experience against experience as Foster's three-pointers off the mark. Rebound Bothwell. Offensive rebound, something to keep an eye on. Furman shooting a lot of threes in their half-court sets. What happens, that ends up in long rebounds. Furman's able to capitalize on some of those. Six offensive rebounds. Double team came from Slauson. They rotated around the perimeter of Marcus Foster knocks it down. Big time read. Jalen Slauson has it in the post. They send that extra man. He makes the pass to the opposite 45, and that's good unselfish play by Garrett Heen to Marcus Foster in the corner. Furman now 4 of 11 from beyond the arc. Palin his lead back at 3. We are tied at the half. Students working to get into it there on the far side. Hey, what, every time Furman gets some momentum, answer happens by the Bruins. That time Gillespie off the glass. Uh, Jacoby Gillespie is a really good athlete, but he's going to have to get back on defense. J.P. Begee's pushing the pace. Does everything but finish and then pokes it out of bounds. Belmont basketball. Jacoby Gillespie has that type of athleticism, has the best defender in the Southern Conference guarding him out on top of the, on the, top of the key, and he uses his athleticism to get all the way to the cup and finish. Belmont with a chance to get the lead back. See you know what, both teams north of 50%. Sent to the corner, open three on the way, yes. Turning Kate Tyson. Let the crowd know it. Kate Tyson has been a How about Gary Heen? Forget about it. Excellent job, the five man running the floor. Excellent look up, big time finish. I didn't see it coming, Brian. I would have gotten out of your way. I'll tell you what, that's on a made basket, too. Furman running the break off the make. Coach Ritchie likes to get the ball out of the made basket and back in. But tell you what, going back to Tyson, he was right in front of the students. Gillespie tries to knock it down. That goes over the backboard and out of bounds. What are they going to say? It's going to be Furman basketball. Tyson turned to the student, let him know he flushed it down. Tyson now with nine. That wasn't him. How about? Garrett Heen running out. Quick flush for the 6'10 big man. He's done a lot of things today, Bryant, for Furman that doesn't necessarily show up on the stat sheet. He's been excellent at ball screen defense, jumping out and hard hedging and then retreating to his man. He's communicating at a high level. His stats aren't terrific. He's got eight, four, and three. I tell you what, that is pretty good. Eight, four, and three, but he's doing a lot of those other things that really provide value to his team. Slauson with four points, kicks it out for Foster. Can he hit another one? That's air ball short, out of bounds, and it'll be Belmont basketball. Foster was trying to hit his second three-pointer of the half. If Foster can do that with consistency, the level of value that he brings to this team uh, goes up exponentially because Furman has guys that can get to the rack. Belmont does too. Tied at 42, just underway here in the second half. A battle between two of the best mid-major programs in the country. Here's Gillespie, tries to get it down low, a late whistle. I think they're going to get Heem in the hole. And I'm not sure if that was a foul or not. We might be able to get a replay. But how about Garrett Heem fronting the post, doing a nice job. And what makes Belmont so difficult to guard, right, is all that action away from the basketball on the backside. It's hard for the help side to come over and help on a pass that would go over the post player's head. Ryan Christian with the call. Luke Payne, Billy Dunlap, the other two officials here tonight. 
Lieber trying to work down low, double team. Gillespie, one more to Tyson, thought about a three. Now he'll step back on the way. That was short, rebound by Swanson. Swanson, four points, going along with a couple rebounds tonight. Down the lane, out of bounds, and they would say off the hands of Jalen Swanson. Powell just turned it over for the eighth time, make it but, 11th time. But you have to like the aggressiveness by Slauson. You get, you see a seam in a semi-break situation, you attack the rim. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. But here's another thing to keep an eye on. That's 11 turnovers. Roman's got to clean that up a little bit. Because they play so fast, you're going to have some. But at the same time, they need to start getting shots on every possession. Felt up nine points off those turnovers. Backdoor cut. Tiptoeing along the baseline was Freiburg. Next whistle for the under 16 media timeout. Ball passed down low, and it looks like Garrett Heen's going to get called for another personal foul. That's going to be the second on the junior, and it'll be Belmont basketball when we come back. Teams trading buckets. We're tied at 42 here early, second half from Greenville. Suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com to make an appointment. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got the future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. When you buy Diamond from Hills, you're getting us. We know what it means to see a smile, to see that reaction when you get that engagement ring. And we take great pride in that stone being absolutely the most beautiful diamond it possibly could be. It's about the smile that it creates when someone opens that box. We've put our life and our soul in picking that diamond especially for you. This is no sleepy-headed, moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier-breaking humans who took $7 billion and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment, it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward-thinking pilgrims of change, like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. Brian Labor, Terrence Ogles will be back with you. 42 all here early second half. will be Belmont basketball when we restart. Tell you what, we talked about these two teams nationally right there in the mid-major poll. Throw out the team at the top. I don't consider them a mid-major. I don't think anybody does are. anymore. Tell you what, Furman right there in top 10, and then Belmont coming in around 820. Uh, I mean, both high-quality teams. Both teams can shoot it. Both teams can go on runs, and that's been this game so far, Brian, a game of runs. But here in the second half, both teams holding serves. And I think that, that little girl right there, she's going to be able to stay up for the rest of this game. Those rubbing those eyes. I have little kids. Yeah, I got, know what that but means. But you know typically. what you got? You got the passing, and that is a, that is a, game a veteran parent move. <laughs> Coach Bob Ritchie had two older kids, and he had a little, little boy a little over maybe about a year ago, so he's back in the, the routine as Kay Tyson looks at her baseline, step back on the way. Smooth move there by the freshman. He's starting to heat up double digits with 11. Hey, Kay Tyson's a bad boy. I think we're starting to figure that out awfully quick. Was probably the fourth or fifth player or option on his AAU team. Played with Caleb Foster, a Duke commit, going there next season. He has showed a different level to his game lately. Bothwell trying to back it down low, sends it to Foster with 10 on the shot clock. I'll tell you what, Shepard went for the steal. That let Bothwell get it. Slauson puts it back in, but it all started with Shepard going for the steal. And that opens up avenues. Belmont's playing pretty good possession defense, and then Shepard gets out, and they're put in scramble mode. And what happens, Bothwell gets to the cup, and because Slauson's guy has to come over and help, that opens up a possibility for an offensive rebound. 
Tyson sends it near side. Mata White got in the way with a wall from Shanks. Shot clock now in single digits. Shepard working against Vanderwall, one-on-one. Baseline sends it far corner. Two to shoot off the glass, never hit the rim. One, that should be a shot clock violation. Oh, a whistle, and it is the shot clock violation. And you have to be thrilled with that defensive possession. Guys are rotating, getting in the correct spot. Shepard goes baseline, and guys recover. And then Jalen Slauson doing what Jalen Slauson does, protecting the basket towards the end of that clock. That's a big time block straight up. That's a senior on a freshman right there. Slauson has a really long wingspan. Can be, can be exceedingly physical on that end of the floor. Palin has a chance to get the lead back. Back and forth we go. These teams trading largest lead. Three for Belmont, 11 for Furman. That was midway through the first half. Anderson to the corner. Bothwell left-handed three on the way. Oh, halfway down. Tipped out. Furman's going to get another chance. Offensive rebound adding up now with eight. But you can see some of these things that Furman was so polished on at the end of last year. These are just beginning of the year mistakes. Guys are getting a little cluttered. That is a great pass. That is not a good pass, Brian. That is a great pass. Slauson turns towards the baseline, away from that double team, and sees the opposite 45. That provides a different level to Furman's offense. Every time the Paladins got some momentum, Belmont has answered. Now a nice pass down low, easy reverse layup up and in. As Freiburg converts. Freiburg now 13 points for the grad student. Hander Wall down low to Slauson. He's bumped by Walker, easy call. That's gonna be just the first Belmont team foul of the second half. And here's the thing, Ben Vanderwall, the freshman, is a pretty good shooter from the perimeter. But look at this pass. Double team comes. He spins a. Oh, excuse me. That's this. That's this possession. This foul. Uh, Pat, but Vander can't Wall, understand it. Yeah, but Ben Vanderwall. He comes up. He's that high guy. You have to be ready to shoot the basketball. Big time player out of the state of Illinois. The freshman. He's played a little bit passive. That's a shot that I think Coach Bob Ritchie is comfortable with him taking, given that his feet are set. Anderson now two of four from long range. He has it far corner and now Slauson. Heavy man-to-man -man pressure by Belmont. They've gone in the zone a few times. It's Bothwell, strong take down the right side of the lane. He has 14. And by Bothwell, so difficult to defend because of those strong, broad shoulders. He gets his shoulders on you. You can forget about it. And you better get out and guard Kay Tyson. From the corner again. Oh, firm and fortunate. Halfway down and out. Paladins can add to the lead. Slauson down the right side. Partially blocked. Can't get the roll. No, a whistle and a foul. Slauson will go to the line for two. First free throw for the Paladins here, 12.50 to go in the second half. But Slauson, really strong for your trying to get out in front, almost able to convert the end one, but you saw it on that possession. Slauson, they're able to open the floor in a break situation. Carter Witt's running the floor on the 45. Joe Anderson's running down to the corner. Those are typically your primary ball handlers as he misses his first one. Those are typically your primary ball handlers, but because of Jalen Slauson's skill, it opens up the floor and allows him opportunities playing against a big man in Freeburg who's backpedaling. Second free throw is true. One of two from the line for the fifth year in the Paladin lead. The largest has been in the second half now at four, 50 to 46. It's been a terrific basketball game. Both teams extremely competitive, big time moves. And Kate Tyson, he's a dude. He's a dude, we've learned it quick, he's a dude. Third rebound now, 13 points there on the weak side, big bucket by the Bruins as they look to stay within one possession. How about that move by Bothwell? Big time play. My man put him in the spin cycle and Mike Bothwell is cooking. He's been that guy that can get downhill with consistency for the Paladins, big time move with the spin. Every time Furman's been trying to get in a multi-possession game, Belmont's come right back. Here, Tyson had it, might have saved it from going over that baseline. Here's Shepard, long range, three on the way. No, Slauson with the board. And now you're off to the races once again. Joe Anderson handing it off. I, Mike Bothwell, you need to put him in as many situations attacking the rim as possible. He plays with good pace, finds the open man, and then you can settle it down and get Carter Witt in a pick and roll. Witt dribbles in front, little floater off the front of the rim. Looking for contact, not there. 
Back and forth we go. We're tied at 37 and a half. Furman winning by four in the second. Next whistle will be a media timeout. Shanks down low, muscles it up, can't get it to fall. Slauson with the board. Rebounds heavily in favor of the Paladins. 28-15 as Coach Ritchie calls the offense. Get a chance, Terrence, opportunity here for the Paladins to maybe get a little bit of space. Bothwell, top of the key, thought about a three. Now a bit of a mismatch. Ball poked away, three on the shot clock, three on the way, off the mark. Battle for the rebound, oh, Vanderwall held, and it's gonna be out of bounds, Furman basketball. And how about the freshman gutting in, attacking the offensive glass, Ben Vanderwall bringing value with his effort. 10.50 to go here in Timmins Arena, don't go anywhere. We have a four point game in Greenville. is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. We don't really want war. All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. Fate only binds you if you let it. We will make our own destiny. There will always be bumps in the road. But we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. I wish I could see June this holiday. Some time with Oscar would be nice. Causing trouble? Running around the ship? Lying through my teeth? Yeah, that's, that's what, what I'm wishing for. for. Oscar! I'm not following you. What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything that there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. True story. Four preeminent programs meet to tip off the season every year. Kentucky, Michigan State, Duke, Kansas. Experience the State Farm Champions Classic begins Tuesday at 7 on ESPN. 52-48, Pallet is his Furman basketball coming out of the timeout. Bryant Lambert, Terrence Oglesby with you. Tell you what, Belmont's knocked down nine from long range. Furman five of 15 from long range. Second chance points, Furman 10 to two, outscoring the Bruins. Trying to get it inbounds, and it's gonna be a five second call coming out of the timeout. Bruins forced the turnover. And that's enough to drive you crazy. Coming out of a timeout, you're able to draw something up and getting a five count. That's a golden opportunity to capitalize on an extra effort play by the freshman before the break, Ben Vanderwall. 12th turnover for the Paladins. Bruin looking to capitalize. Half court man to man has been the case most of the night for the Paladins. As Shepard all the way off the glass and in. Shepard now with 13. Quick move there by the senior. Back to a one possession game. Paladins up two. Vanderwall into the paint, sends it over to Anderson. Thought about a three. Over to Witt. Space, three ball on the way. Yes. Connor Witt with his second three. Carter Witt, rather, his second three pointer. And the Paladins up five. Carter Witt, typically a primary ball handler, but allowing him to move off the ball opens up a lot of things for him. And there, a late whistle. And it's going to be a foul going against the Paladins down low. Shepard again. Competitive on the glass, and every time the crowd gets into it, Belmont responding as we take another look. Getting a little overzealous is Jalen Slauson trying to get the block. But I mean, Ben Shepard is difficult to guard, not only because of his individual skill, but how 
Casey Alexander, the head coach of Belmont, sets him up, running him off the screens from side to side. He's so long and athletic that he's still able to finish inside as well. Like, it's tough to guard somebody that's in constant movement. You look at guys like Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, those guys never quit moving. And he provides, he's obviously not that guy, but he provides that sort of offense for Belmont. Bruins now just one of six from the free throw line. Furman one of two from the charity stripe. Palin is five point lead with a chance to extend. Slawson down the right side off the glass. No, but a foul. Aggressive move by the fifth year. And a lot of that spurred on by Mike Bothwell coming off the ball screen and attracting two defenders. But Slawson gets a little bit of a crease. He gets to his right hand. He is tough to stop. Number 20 using his athleticism. See how much Coach Bob Ritchie trusts Slauson out there. They just had a little exchange. He says, hey, go up strong and finish that. Don't fade away. He's one of two from the line, the only paladin to go to the charity strap. There's seven points, six boards, four assists. Look at what just every stat line Slauson fills up. He is a stat sheet stuffer, a veteran in this offense, second year kind of being that primary option within a lot of their half-court sets. And when I, what I mean by primary off option Mike Bothwell is their primary scorer. Jalen Slauson is the primary option. They run so many things through him. Seven point Furman lead, largest of the second half. Top of the key, three pointer on the way. Wow. Yes, big shot. What a response by Belmont. Every time, and now back to four. How about Drew Freeberg, who is basically a four slash five man, is still able to maintain his balance and come off a screen? That is a difficult shot. Carter Witt thought about it. Now takes it to the glass and lays it in. You gotta respect them both ways, back to six. How about this, 10 three-pointers now though for the Bruins to keep them in it. What good crowd here in Tim as Pallet is needing to come alive a bit, help him out. Gillespie looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now Walker. Shepard working against the freshman, kicks it to the corner. Look how quick Belmont's moving the basketball. Walker into Slauson, good defense without fouling. Slauson leading the break, up to Bothwell. Now to Slauson through his hands. Oh, the Paladins turned it over. Now whistled for the 16th foul. That's a tough one. You got to keep the simple things simple. Bothwell, you, you hit a nice little bounce pass right there, and Slauson's able to finish. Didn't see the help side coming over. Ben Shepard, nice job communicating. The Vanderwall is kind of unfortunate on that occasion. That shows you another thing. Slauson gets it, pitches it ahead. Belmont doing a nice job communicating and getting back. You have to love Ben Vanderwall. I mean, he just subbed out of the game, but he has brought energy. He hasn't been a huge piece of the offense, but he attacks the offensive glass. He's a ball mover. Done some really nice things for the Paladins. Every possession so big between these teams is that ball knocked out of bounds. They'll stay with Belmont, 12 on the shot clock. Carter Witt's playing well. Point guard, the Wake Forest transfer as Jalen Slauson checks out of the game. He's playing with confidence. He's providing some, some help on the defensive end with active hands. Shot clock now down to five. Try to backdoor cut. Free burn. Four to shoot. Now Tyson, late in the shot clock, in and out, rebound, Marcus Foster, no, a whistle. And now it's gonna be shots the rest of the way, one and one, crowd doesn't like the call. And I'm not sure I love the call either. That's two big bodies trying to box out and battling. Now, here's an issue, and they're gonna be lucky if they don't look at this, because Garrett Heen, that could have easily been a hook and hold, which results in a fragrant, wow, in a fragrant, can you say that for me? Because I'm it's struggling. A flagrant foul. A flagrant yeah. foul. Thank you. Hey, it's early for everybody <laughs> hey, look, here. Everybody's Gotta knocking off the rust. preseason game, you know. Everybody's knocking off the rust. Not just the players, right? But a flagrant foul. If there is a hook and hold, that's something that Garrett he needs to be careful about. They're very lucky that they're not coming over to the side to look at it. One and one for the Bruins from the line. That one rattles out. Tell you what. It's been a physical game, right? Belmont's got to be kicking themselves now. One of seven from the line. They're missing the front end of a freebie. It's been an exceedingly physical game, especially as the game has slowed down. Here comes Bothwell. Squads. Top of the key, tries to get the basketball back. Check out that pressure defense by Shepard. 
Eight on the shot clock. Keen down the left side. Bump, but gets the roll. No call. And now Paladin slowly but steadily building the lead. Eight point game. Under eight to go. Tyson. He'll pull up, little elbow jumper, short, rolls off the front, offensive rebound, blocked by Heen into the hands of the Paladins. Here comes Anderson into the front court to Heen. Furman now to slow things down with Witt. Heen, three, top of the key, yes! And the Paladins go up 64-53. Tying the largest lead of the night, Timmons alive, timeout, Belmont. And how about Garrett Heen? He blocks it on one end and he's rewarded on the other. A little pick and pop, knocking down the three ball. We called for the crowd to get into it. The crowd is into it. 7-11 to go, Furman up 11. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimble Winter leads to Ragnarok. War is coming. We don't really want war. All that blood on your hands, on your son's hands. Fate only binds you if you let it. We will make our own destiny. It was a night at the Home Depot, Thank you. at every Thank location. You. A night when our stores see a grand transformation. We bring out the tools you really do need, like snowmen and string lights and plenty of trees. We work through the night preparing our splendor for Black Friday savings all through November. And what you do next is always fantastic, because we have the tools to make your holiday magic. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. This is a personalized ad. It helps you find good ideas. This is Jada, who found one. And here's Greg, badly in need of a good idea. You see, you can discover a small business at any moment. Oh look, it's that moment when a good idea helps make a moment a better moment. You get the idea. Good ideas deserve to be found. Personalized ads help you find them. There will always be bumps in the road. But we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got the future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. Garrett, he, Terrence, you said defense leading to that three-pointer. Oh, and that was a big one now. Crowd into this basketball game, but Belmont's responded every time. Well, he's come alive here in the last two or three minutes. It was a block on that possession leading to the three. The possession before that, he catches Belmont's five on a closeout. He takes it to the rack. 7-0 run, a 5-0 run just for Garrett Heen. He's been terrific here in the second. He still should have that under eight media timeout. That was the first called timeout of the second half and went to a media. Berman a 7-0 run. They've hit their last four from the field. Shepard trying to get to the glass, partially blocked and a late whistle. Billy Dunlap with the call. Coach Ritchie doesn't like it. And it's going to be two shots at the line. It should be the under eight, and it is. And Ben Shepard, for them to get back in this ball game, for Belmont to get back in this ball game, he's going to have to be the aggressor and be a little bit more effective on the offensive end, especially in the half court. Two shots for the Bruins from the line, and even seven to go here inside Timmins Arena. sales event on now through november 30th your purchase of a new bmw will help provide 200 meals to local families in need it's boat time this is larry and this is the big bold hand breaded bose chicken sandwich larry knew he couldn't he shouldn't i mean he is a chicken after all but larry craved this flavor-packed hunk of sandwich and before he knew it 
His little chicken heart belonged to Bojangles forever. Thanks to a sandwich so juicy, so tender. Even a chicken wants to eat it. Why are people not trying to eat? Nachos, better with Pepsi. <sighs> you fired up the grill for one hot dog? Seriously? Hot dogs, better with Pepsi. <sighs> Health, suddenly that word seems more important these days as it's consumed all aspects of our lives and made our universes feel smaller than ever. But at Bon Secours, your health has always been our top priority, and we're staying as committed as always to personalizing the right care for you. Because whether here or from home, we believe your health care should always revolve around you. Bon Secours, primary care for the universe of you. Visit bonsecours.com to make an appointment. Taking a look at your preseason Southern Conference standings presented, presented by Ingles. They let Furman there pick to win the league. Sanford right there at second, getting four first place votes, top to bottom. They got TVMI down there. Of course, interesting move there, Earl going to Chattanooga, but not an easy place to go anywhere in the Southern Conference. No, I mean, Furman and Sanford, they're going to be your favorites, but UNCG has got a nice team. They're losing right now by six to Miami team that could compete in the Atlantic Coast Conference, but it's a deep conference the Southern Conference there's excellent coaches up and down the line but permanent Sanford I mean those are your two leaders from a talent perspective hey you see that baby was still awake how do you how do you fall asleep you called her out you earlier can't, hey, you can't saying, fall Mr. asleep during this game I'm staying up it will be two shots at the line for the Bruins that was Shepard being aggressive coming out of that last time out Shepard 13 points for the Bruins one of three double-digit scores Paladins in the midst of this 7-0 run Here in the second half, though, it hasn't been overly aggressive. Only three shot attempts. They're going to need him to be aggressive, and that's one of eight from the free throw line, Brian. And if there's going to be one thing that Belmont looks at after this game is over, if it goes the wrong way for them, you have to take care of business at the free throw line. That one rattles around and in. So a 10-point Furman lead, even seven-minute mark to go. 64-54, partner. We wanted a good one. We have a good one. To the Paladins, you want to keep that offensive rhythm. You see, backdoor cut. Bothwell blocked. I think that's going to be goaltending. That was awfully gonna athletic. That, that, was was gonna awfully athletic. that was awfully athletic to get back into play and try to attempt it. Now, are they going to count the basket? That's a big question. Oh, I'm not sure Ooh. if that's a foul. Tell you what, it but looked it like that might have been off the glass. They're going to give him two shots. I'll tell you what, it could be an and one opportunity. They call the foul. I like that uh, that play call coming out of a timeout, though. Belmont overplaying the passing lanes a little bit, kind of using Ben Shepard's aggressiveness defensively against him. And you bring back Mike Bothwell out on the wing, send him back door, and you clear out that backside, and you have an opportunity. Bothwell, one of two from the line. It's an 11-point game. Every possession big now for the Bruins. Hey, what, both teams shooting the basketball well, Terrence Furman 55%, the Bruins at 44%. Gillespie working against Anderson, trying to back him down, hesitates, nowhere to go. Freeberg turns, tries to send it to the corner, and Carter Witt there to take it away. Into the front court, Witt wants to go all the way off the glass, put a foul, and it'll go to the line. Tell you what, you're saying, 104, do you want to pull it back there, but earned the two. But he also had... K. Tyson's back turned here. That's when you can attack because he's not going to be able to get garner position. That's a nice aggressive attack by the Wake Forest transfer quarter wit. And a lot of people question his defensive ability. He's been good today, Brian. I mean, active hands, getting out in the passing lanes, keeping the guy in front, needs to make a free throw. But for the most part, he's been really impressive. Doing a lot of those other things. Eight points, four assists, three boards. Free throws, I think, yeah, both teams are struggling from the free throw line. Two of nine for the Bruins, Furman now four of eight. Lead stays at 11. Belmont 10 to 23 from long range, Furman 7 to 17. 
Freeburg on the way, that's off the mark. Tipped around, Slauson gives it to Tyson. Tyson put back up and in off the glass. Tyson now with 15, it's a nine point game. Kay Tyson staying with his, he plays with an edge. You've seen him a couple of times, really charge a full head of steam into the other team. He, he's been good. Bothwell backs it down, up and in, he has 19. Hey, that's a grown man against the freshman. That's what just happened right there. Bothwell, huge shoulders, puts his shoulder in the defense. Gillespie, only 18 years old. Welcome to college basketball, young fella. Associate head coach Jeremy Grow yelling at the team to get a stop. That three-pointer from the corner off the mark. Loose ball. Still Slauson trying to grab it. Fighting through defenders. Up to Foster. Showtime. He's all alone. Hello. Hustle plays defense to offense. And now they're going to go dry up the court. 13-point lead. The largest of the night for the Paladins. That's an effort play, Jalen Slauson. That's your senior making that play. And Marcus Foster, he, not a giant personality. He's just going to get the job done. He's a dude. He's a dude. Brief stop at your play to clean up the court. You talk about hustle plays. So that defense may win that game. That was getting on the court. Well, defense, Belmont, one of seven in their last seven shots from the field. And I mean, it is all on the defensive end right now for Furman. And those extra hustle plays are those plays that will help extend out a lead. Right now, Belmont in need of baskets and quick. Still not out of this game the way they can shoot the basketball and defend on either side. Under five to go. Furman with the largest lead now at 13. Step back, three-pointer on the way. Yes, big time shot by Jacoby Gillespie. And that's not an easy one. Crossover, step back, and then you're still knocking it down over a high hand. Jacoby Gillespie, I, I, he certainly has shown why he brings value as a freshman this year. Four and a half to go, 10 point game. Bothwell, he's leading all scores with 19. Trying to go over 20, left hand floater, yes. I tell you what. His patience. Does it all. His patience is what sets him apart. He gets into the lane, he doesn't feel forced. That's six points to assist to go along with those now 21 points. Gillespie again trying to go down low off the glass. Coach Ritchie trying to go to the bench, trying to get some guys in there to keep Gillespie from getting to the glass. 71-61, clock at Owen Furman's favor as it ticks under four to our final media timeout. Next dead ball. Slaw almost has it, kicks it to the corner, wide open. Anderson, yes, I tell you what, Belmont cheated, went for the steal. That left it open, Joe Anderson. He now has nine. And that's what makes it so difficult to guard Furman. You have to stay disciplined in what you're doing defensively or else so many different guys can make you pay. Loose ball underneath, battle for it. Loose off the glass, a whistle. And two more free throws at the line when we come back. Partner Furman starting to feel it here up 13. A lot of defensive possessions and then getting out and running and just capitalizing on mistakes, Brian. 3.37 to go. And that's a grown man move for my man Mike Bothwell. And Furman is off and running. Up 13, three minutes to play. Everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. You already know what time it is. Because you have to be ready for an NFC East clash. You take advantage of the moment. Washington is set to take command. Remember what we do and why we do it. While the Eagles are determined to stay undefeated. Keep flying, baby. Let's go. The Washington Commanders meet the Eagles. This might be the most emotionally charged match of the modern era. So Black Girl Hockey Club is all about building a community within the community. A heart pounding atmosphere. This is the loudest that has ever been here.
everyone is ready for Monday Night Football. The Washington Commanders meet the Eagles. We're coming straight back with the BMW play of the game, and that might be the easiest one all day, Brian. A backwards reverse alley-oop flush. Not many guys can do that. Jalen Slauson can, and that was impressive. Up, up, and away, young fella. I feel a little down on that, down on that. Tell you what, how many, you had a couple dunks in your day, right? That 50% career dunker, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Brian. I, look, I was, I was bringing up the one you, I was bringing up the one you made, not the one. Okay. Yeah, look, look. I, I, Partner, I set you up for success. I'm like not that. setting you up for that. Hey, 50% 50, 50 career dunker. If I could have shot 50% from two in my career, I would have been okay with that. You would have feel it again. 3.37 to go for 74-61. Two upcoming at the line for Bronze, the junior out of Iowa City, Iowa. Tell you what, Furman came out hot in that first half, built the 11-point lead. Belmont showed what kind of program they are, came back, took the lead. Both teams traded punches. Very methodical last six, seven minutes from the Paladins. Eight of their last eight from the field, high percentage looks. And some of those were in transition, and some of those were them just executing in the half court. Furman making the extra pass, finding the open shot, and Mike Bothwell has been terrific from start to finish. 10 of 13 from two. 0 of 4 from three, but 10 of 13 from two. He has been really good attacking the bucket. Tell you what, you got to expect some, probably some full court pressure here as you see Frank Selby enjoying himself here on Frank Selby night. 12-point Furman lead. You're going to see Furman's going to stay aggressive offensively. Corner, Vanderwall, three, no, that's short. Rebound taken down by Gillespie. Saw Jeremy Grow yelling at his team to get back. Hey, well, that's one for Shepard. You may want to pop there. Down 12 early in the shot clock. Yeah, but only 3.05 to go. Bothwell tips it out of bounds. Nice job fronting the post. That's an excellent job staying active and keeping his body on. But if you're able to look behind the defense on that possession, guys were in position. Look, Vanderwall's back there, Marcus Foster, both ready to jump on that double team if the ball does go through. But Mike Bothwell has been exceedingly active both sides of the ball this time. Tell you what, Drew Freeberg is a load to handle. Like, he's not the quickest guy. He's not the fastest guy. But he uses angles well. He handles the ball well enough. He's going to the free throw line again. And he's knocked down some big threes as well. But Belmont, it seems like they are getting to the free throw line a lot. It doesn't really matter. Three of 11 with Freebergs going for the next two. It has eliminated them from the basketball game at this point as they miss another one. Freeberg is tough. He's tough to guard. Tell you what, and the way he goes about it. That's right. One of two there from the line. That, tell you what, an opportunity. You probably see some full court pressure here out of the Bruins. They're going to look to extend a little bit. They put in Isaiah Walker, the freshman from Wyoming, Ohio. I know that sounds crazy. The town's Wyoming. But Isaiah Walker, an excellent athlete in his own right, trying to mix up, you mix it up a little bit. As they do, they force the turnover. And Belmont gets the ball back with a chance to move it into single digits. 14th turnover of the game for the Palace. Those 14 turnovers have led to 13 Belmont points. Consequently, on the other side, nine Belmont turnovers for 10 Paladin points. Still plenty of time, though, for the Bruins. 11-point deficit, 3.02 to go. I'm not quite sure. Bob Ritchie very animated on the side. Coach Ritchie telling thought it was tipped. All right, Christian Sandals never touched. Down low. Fighting through contact. Tyson can't get the roll. Now you're going to see J.P. Pagis take his time bringing the ball to court. Got to expect pressure off the basketball here with Gillespie. Well, you put Pagis back in the lineup because he gives you that quickness with the ball in his hands to handle pressure. And Marcus Foster with a grown man move. Man, he has really improved since his time coming to Furman. Look at the strength, the upper body, the left hand, the shield of the defender, and the emotion for the end one. Foster now in double digits with 10. That was, that was a good job of, of what I call aggressive but patient offense, right? You take it when you had it, but you, you used a little bit of clock, but you don't try to take, quote unquote, take the air out of the ball. Well, that's exactly right. You still have to take what the defense gives you. Pagese 
breaking the defense down and giving Marcus Foster just a slight crack to penetrate. He's able to take advantage. Now a 14-point lead, largest of the night here with two and a half to go. That mountain getting taller for the Bruins. Shepard down low, nice take, big move by the senior. Shepard's points are adding up now at 16. Goodness me, I mean, that is a big-time move. Attacks the closeout, quick spins, feels the defense as Belmont's mixing up some pressure, trapping the basketball up top. Pegues loose with it. Battle for it, Freeburg has it. Furman turns it over, chance to get into single digits. Ball sent Tyson, one more to the corner. Three-pointer Shepard, halfway down. No, Slauson grabs the rebound. The tenth rebound for Slauson. He's a point away from a double-double. Foster down low, left-handed finish. No, can't do it, loose ball. Battle for it. Foster has it. Coach Ritchie trying to say, pull it out. That shot doesn't oh fall, but hello. Goodness. He did it again. Jalen Slauson is a highlight factory. Double-double quickly on the other end. Tyson knocks it down. Timeout, but catch your breath. I'm trying. I'm out of Look, breath. Part How about this? Goes up, left hand, can't make it finish, stays after it. Bob Ritchie's begging for him to get it out. Nope, goes up, misses again, and here he comes. Forget about it. All right, so you have the, the reverse alley-oop. <laughs> look at and you had Jalen Slauson look right at you. How do you not you, you, love it? So you pick one, the reverse alley-oop or the put-back rebound dunk. If I had Take to pick, pick one, time and score says that one should be it, but there's just so few guys that can finish a backwards alley-oop within a half-court set. So I'm going with the first so one, but that one's impressive in its the, own right. The ladies and gentlemen up in Bristol, how about a little combo top ten of, of Slauson dunks from Greenville, South Carolina tonight. That would only make sense. You know, you, you know those guys. Make a call up there. You know those guys. Belmont. They have no days off. Let's put it that way. Their non-conference schedule is pretty tough. Georgia State should be good. Valparaiso, always a tough out. Lipscomb, their little crosstown rivalry that they have in Nashville, only miles apart. Yeah, and they'll be part going down to the islands playing in that Paradise Jam in St. Thomas. Paladins will get into their upcoming schedule. They'll down down to Charles before the ESPN Classics, trying to go deep to Slauson. Hello, almost grabbed him. It could have been an intentional foul. Coach Ritchie calling for it as he was trying to be grabbed from behind, and Slauson's getting the dunk fest alive. Tell you what, Coach, Coach Ritchie, Ritchie has a case. He needs to, he needs to leave it alone, though, and get his guys back to, to playing half-court defense. Belmont's trying to score quick. There's not a whole lot of time to figure these things out. Nice veteran move right here by Bothwell. Pull it out, get the foul call, go to the free throw line. You're looking to waste some clock right now. So Slauson got the dunk, Belmont went back for the layup. You see kind of over helped by Belmont, but go back to this dunk. This is what Coach Ritchie was upset about. Kind of saw the dive looking to grab. Dangerous situations sometimes come up there. It could be, but I, here's the thing. Freeburg falls anyway, no harm done. And then you get the easy basket. You need to get back on defense. Lawson, after that dunk is happening, you know Belmont's trying to score quick. You need to get back and orchestrate your team to get out and get in front. Bothwell up the line, trying to lead to a game high 21 point. Output, make it 22. This game has lived up to the billing line. Both teams extremely competitive. You can see where both teams are going to be a handful in their respective conferences. Belmont can shoot the cover off the ball. They've got athletes. They're going to have guys come back from injury that's going to make them even more dangerous. Quick trigger three on the way. That was off the mark. Weak side rebound. Furman trying to salt this one away as Bothwell will go to the line for a one and one. Pal and a crowd feeling it. What a performance here at home for Furman. As you take a look at what they have upcoming, they'll hit the road down to Charleston. Nittany Lions of out of the Big Ten. Be a tough one for Coach Ritchie, but they what Sloss is feeling this one back there tonight. And it says College of Charleston there twice. And well, that's, that they'll is be correct. playing down at Charleston. That, that is Tech. correct. That is correct. But that field is loaded this season. And Furman has just as good a chance as anybody. One more coming. I'm sure you said that, Brian. I'm sure you said that, Brian, but I just. <laughs> I'm in and out. There's just been so much excitement in this game, and Furman pulling away up 15. But it, it's going to look this way at the end of the game. But this has been a close game up until about the four minute mark. I mean, both teams really competing, making things happen. 
Yeah. I mean, high-level basketball. Slauson grabs the rebound. He's adding on to his double-double. He'll be fouled now. Tell you what, Popwell, 25 points. Slauson's urging the crowd to come to their feet. Tell you what, this is why Slauson came back. This is why Popwell came back. For moments like this in Timmons with this kind of crowd, because I'll tell you what, Coach Rucci has said what he built on the court. He's also built this environment. There's no question. And on, on top of that, you have a great student turnout tonight. And, and these guys have performed. And Slauson's final stat line, he ends up with a double-double. But his impact on the floor has been so much more than that. Just changed the energy of the game with some of his dunks towards the end. But you have that veteran presence. And some of these newer pieces that didn't get a lot of minutes last season, Bryant, like the J.P. Pagese or, or Carter Witt who transfers to Furman. Like, those guys showed out and showed out well today. Tell you what, Furman's up 17. This was anything but a 17-point game. Easy to the glass. Timeout taken by Belmont. And it looks like, no, Ryan Christian thought it was coming. Inadvertent whistle. And the 15-point lead. At this point, the Paladins just need to take care of the basketball and let this time come to the end. Casey Alexander instructing his guys no more fouls. Just play it on us and play it straight up. And well, Belmont's not going to quit, though. No, they're not going to quit. But, I, but at the same time, Coach Alexander kind of slowing them down, saying, hey, guys, we're not going to foul. Yeah. Let's just play this one out. Trying to decide who it went last out of. 41.8 to go. Furman up 87. What's what impressed you the most tonight out of this Paladin team? Uh, Mike Bothwell doing what Mike Bothwell does. And we all know he's a big time scorer. Their leading returning scorer from a season ago. He's come out with a purpose this season. And this is a good performance by him. Uh, I mean, shows his patience, shows his maturity, shows his strength. Nice slip. Shepard, who's come on strong for the Bruins. We talked about on the open. He showed up 20 or 18 points in 37 minutes of action. And Furman able to beat the pressure. Coach Alexander says back off, 13-point game, about a nine-second differential. Slauson one oh more time. My. Time out to keep it rolling. Coach Alexander not happy about just with the effort out of his team. Look at Slauson. How about this? Knock it back and flush it through Jalen Slauson with the exclamation point for this Paladin team. A really well-played game. And where they really extended out their lead is when their defense got more discipline. Whenever they were able to convert defense into offense, they are deadly. That was their strength last season. It seems like nothing has changed this year. If anybody had any question marks on how Jalen Slauson was feeling, I think he's answered that and more. Shot clock turned off, forming up 15, final 20 seconds set the runoff here from Greenville. Three from the side, in and out. And that should do it. Tell you what, partner, what a night, what an atmosphere. An atmosphere. A really good game that was closer than the final score indicates. Belmont has a really good team, but tonight was Furman's night, especially in the last six or seven minutes of this ball game. Defensively, these guys certainly showed out. 89-74, your final partner, final thoughts. Uh, when Furman's rolling and they're playing good defense, these guys are tough because what happens is that offensive, that floor opens up offensively. They can get downhill. And their athletes, namely Jalen Slauson, can really finish. For Jeff Schetzel, his entire ESPN crew, for Terrence Oglesby, I'm Bryant Lambert saying so long from Greenville where the Paladins win the battle of mid-major heavyweights here inside Timmins Arena. Front yards have long reigned as the showpiece of the house, but just like a good mullet, we all know the party's in the back. Barbecue Guys is committed to helping create amazing backyard experiences with the best grills in the game, outdoor essentials, and free design services for building your ultimate backyard. 
it's time to bring the front yard's rain to an end. All right, boys, let's see. Stop on by barbecueguys.com. This holiday season, say big on all the gifts you need for the gifts that keep on giving. Because while they have no idea what's going on here, I... a little something of their own will get them in the spirit. They don't know why you'd ever leave the house like this, but they'll happily hold down the fort while you're gone. Smile. And let's be honest, they'll never understand this whole situation. But they do get this. Thank goodness. Great prices, happy pets. Chewy. Get Black Friday deals now at Target. Save on the hottest gifts to get ahead this holiday. Plus, score more Black Friday deals all month long. Get low prices and great deals so you can holiday your way. Only at Target. What did you expect? Did you think you could relax? Or had you convinced yourself some records were forever? That you'd seen everything that there was to see? Or have you realized you can't look away and you don't know the future and that the game has never been better? That is hockey. A great story has magic, power, and every once in a while, it has miracles. As luck would have it, that's our story.